Hey guys, so we're getting ready to mow second cutting hay today. Just got the disc bind hooked up. We like to go over the mower before we get started, grease it, check the knives. Go hay some mo. Corn's coming up good. I was busy yesterday getting the spraying done for the early corn. Put a little fertilizer and herbicide on. It's not quite as easy as first cutting because we got corn growing right beside these fields. I didn't take any corn out in the first pass. Moved over to the home farm now. It's gonna be a really strong crop here for second cutting. It's actually lodged a little bit, kind of blown over. When the hay gets laid over a little bit in the wind, depends on the direction I'm going, I'm making some skippers like that, just can't pick it up. We try to cut every four weeks, can cheat a little bit more than that. It's been five weeks since last time. Last week wasn't the best week to be mowing. Once it gets too mature, it'll start getting purple flowers on it. And I don't see any purple flowers in this field. Some of the other fields had a little bit, but it's just getting to that point now where we need to mow it. Once it gets too mature, the uh, forage quality comes down a little bit. Always a bunch of little bugs on the mower. I don't know if you can see these little green bugs. cutting we had some weeds in some of our fields but the nice thing is after that usually you don't see them come back up the alfalfa kind of dominates dad's gonna take over for me a little bit i'm gonna go get some lunch So I just spent some time in my office filling out some papers for our crop insurance, write down how many acres of what we have planted, the planting dates and everything. So I just took a little bit of time to get that all straightened out. We don't farm that many acres compared to some farmers, but we have a lot of little fields, so it can be a lot to keep track of. This is the first time we're mowing this field. We just seeded it this spring. So when we did first cutting on the other fields, we didn't do this field because it was only about six inches tall. This field's where we're gonna have to be a little more careful because it's gonna be some rocks at certain spots. We'll be keeping this field in alfalfa for the next at least three years. And if it holds up good, even more than that. So once we figure out all the, where all the rocks are and get them out of the way, we don't usually have too much trouble. Just about done with this field and then we got four strips up there for the last 15 acres. It's going pretty smooth today. The slight chance of rain actually right around mid-afternoon. I guess that's what that cloud is. Doesn't look too serious. Well, we didn't get any rain. I have one more field to do. Nobody's here today working on the building.
mowing's all finished. I got the tractor unhooked, putting some fuel in it. It is 4.15 the next morning. I'm gonna get the first group of cows over. We're gonna get these milked. Here we got 482. So I'll go ahead and chase these cows over and clean these stalls off. It's a cool 60 degrees out this morning. Feels awesome. It's funny because the corn likes heat, but the cows like the cool. This morning's gonna be a little bit different because the milk tester is here. There's gonna be units on all of our milkers this morning that are gonna measure how much milk each cow has. And then we'll collect a sample from each cow as well for testing. These units collect a small amount of the milk as it's going past. Most of it goes in the system, but it just collects a small percentage and then gives a measurement how many pounds she made this milking. And we'll also get a sample out of here. So when a new set of cows comes in, she'll go up there, write down all the numbers, and then match them up with the milkers then so we know which cow had how much milk. I'm gonna go get the second group now. And you can see the sunlight peeking over the horizon over there. It's not even 5 a.m. Finished up with the milking. I'm gonna put a little bit of bedding in the special needs pen. So it looks like we're gonna be chopping this alfalfa later today. Plan is to put it in the bigger harvest store silo there. So I'm gonna climb that right now. We'll get set up for filling. We were working in the silo a little bit last week and we noticed there was a little pinhole in the roof. So I'm gonna go up there with some caulk and fill that in, make sure it's sealed up. Doesn't look like the builders are gonna be working on the barn today either. They're waiting on some gates and headlocks and things, so it's gonna be a few weeks till we're moving in. I was just on the phone with my dad. We were trying to find where this hole was. We knew it was kinda towards this side of the silo, and I was making a shadow at different spots until it went dim, and we found the hole. It's this little spot right there. It's about a sixteenth of an inch across. It's a pretty obvious speck of light when you're looking from the bottom up. Put a nice glob of caulk on there. Should seal it up good. I'm gonna go ahead and open this door up. We'll drop this chute down into the silo and then we gotta have to open up that little door down there too. airbags in there uh, that help manage the pressure. You gotta pull those up as high as they go to keep them up out of the feed. So they'll hook their blower up to that pipe. We'll find up over this gooseneck. So we're set up there. We'll open that little lid and then head back down. My dad went and picked the rake up. I'm hooking this up now. So 
so the hay would be drying up now. Problem is, once you get to the middle of the day, the leaves get really crunchy from the sun. And when you go to rake it, it would knock a lot of them leaves off. It would end up falling on the ground and we wouldn't get it in the feed. And that's where a lot of our nutrition value is. So we're gonna wait till evening. The dew starts to settle on it. It's not as crispy. Definitely getting nice and dry. You see how these leaves on the surface are. They kind of just fall off if I move them around at all. So we normally use a wheel rake to do our raking, but he's trying this rotary rake just to compare and see how it does. Uh, we're gonna do some with both of the rakes this time. Just after 7.30 in the evening now. The leaves are a little crispy yet. They're starting to soften up. We're gonna get started raking. So one of the issues with raking is you don't wanna pick up dirt. It's not good for the cows to be eating dirt and rocks. Rocks are bad for the chopper. So we're seeing how this one compares to what we normally use. go get the other rake going now so you call that a rotary rake this is a wheel rake that's what I'm used to using this one doesn't take any power from the tractor the other one has a PTO it makes it spin this one just drags on the ground and as it goes it spins them neighbors got an old combine out doing barley He's heading out with his rig. I still have one more field to do. He's gonna go hook a cart up to that tractor, come back with the chopper. It's 9.30 now. They're gonna be showing up any minute with the chopper. Start getting this stuff in the silo. Just gonna push this feed in. They started chopping across the road. The blower should be showing up soon and we'll get him set up on the second silo. So one thing that's really important with these bottom unloading unloaders is you have to run them at first when you start filling them or else all that weight of that feed will just pack down on top of it and it won't be able to move if you don't have it going from the start.
I've just been hanging out around here for a little while, running the unloader ever so often. They've put about five, seven loads in by now. a beautiful night out. I had to put a sweatshirt on. It's below 60 degrees. They're just running two carts. Depends what they're doing. Sometimes they run three, sometimes four if we're doing corn silage far away. They could probably use about two and a half for this job. Sometimes he's waiting a little bit, but most of the time not. On the loader's working good. They got maybe two or three loads and then we'll be done. I grabbed a couple samples, one that we did with the rotary rake and one that we did with the wheel rake. I'd like to send these off to the lab and they can do a test for the ash content. I'm standing at the end of our new heifer barn right now. They're just finishing up this strip. There's one more little field to do. another good crop he said around 22 load it's one in the morning right now so I'm gonna climb up on the silo close the lid and that'll be it for tonight so we're on top of the silo this chute kind of annoys me when you have fluffy feed it kind of spills out a little bit coming around and you end up with a mess so to clean that up a little bit before we can close the lid we got about 40 feet of feed in there First and second cutting were great this year for alfalfa. Well, I got it cleaned up best I could. It's hard to get everything. Close the lid up. Close that little one down there. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Thanks for watching.